you know, I'm a football player played in college and what football really comes down to is blocking and tackling, right? It's, it's not about the athletic ability. It's really about the team that goes out there and executes the best. Um, and SEO is very much the same. You could know everything about Python and, and algorithms and all this stuff and machine learning. But if you don't have the people in your agency to execute the building blocks, it doesn't matter. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the High Level Spotlight Sessions, where we showcase awesome marketers doing awesome marketing. Today, I am joined by Ryan Stewart. He's the founder of the Blueprint Training, which is a program that has helped over 3,000 agencies scale past six figures per month. Ryan, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, Chase. I'm excited to talk to you, Ryan. You're an agency guy. Um, I've been following you remotely for a couple of years now. You've done a fantastic job in YouTube helping folks with uh, SEO. Um, just give us a quick background story. How'd you get into the agency world? And uh, tell us about WebRisk real quick. For sure. Yeah. So I got my start. Well, it goes back a little further. I graduated after I graduated college. I took a job, big corporate consulting, <clears throat> um, kind of started cutting my teeth, doing some digital transformations. This is back in like 2008. Um, before, back before it was called digital marketing, it was still internet marketing. And I was doing some digital transformation projects. Um, just overall though, wasn't overly satisfied with what I was doing and just kind of had some free time and started looking at ways to make money online. Um, the old school way, um, yeah. fell down some banner ads, fell down a whole bunch of different funnels, if you, if you will. Um, and really just kind of discovered the, the beginnings of what we now know as digital marketing SEO being one of them. Um, and, uh, I just kind of became obsessed with it. You know, I started building my own websites, um, just learning everything that I possibly could just trying to make a buck online and, and quit my job. And over time, I just became good at it. Um, you know, I built a couple websites that started picking up a lot of organic traffic. So I started looking more and more into SEO and really started to master that craft and started blogging about it and creating videos about it. And sure enough, people started to want to hire me to do it. So, I uh, started taking on some clients here and there. Um, started like my first agency with, with a kid ended up falling through, you know, lost a lot of money on it, learned a lot, dusted myself off, kept moving forward and founded what is now Webris. Um, ran that for two years, scaled it to a couple million in revenue, ended up selling that was acquired by another agency, um, sat on that agency's executive team for a couple of years, and then decided that it's time for me to move on and, um, basically rebought the rights back to Webris. So now I'm running Webris again, um, <laughs> We do SE. We actually have kind of an interesting offer. We do what are called SEO sprints. We, there's only three of them. We do a technical sprint. We do a content sprint. We do a link sprint. Very highly productized service. We can talk more about that. Um, and then we also have a new offer that we just call our growth offer. And that's basically tell me what your problems is. I'm going to show you how to make more money. Um, mm -hmm. Very high ticket, very high, very much so a done for you um, service offering partner with um, some, some pretty large companies and, and help them implement that. And then along the way too, I've, I've founded a couple of other companies, the blueprint training being one of them. Um, that's actually where I spend most of my time. I prefer to work with agency folks as opposed to clients. So I spend a lot of time there coaching, teaching, consulting, just helping out in any way that I can creating trainings, um, you know, cool little tools and templates and stuff like that. And then also along the way, there's been a couple of e-commerce stores. I actually found a little WordPress plugin that we built and sold. So, uh, very big into, starting building scaling quickly and then kind of getting out of the way and let, letting somebody else turn into a, a longer term business if you will through people and stuff and what that my, my skill set really lies in um, taking nothing and and making people interested in it through marketing um, and through sales so that's an awesome story Ryan I, I love the fact that you went and got webers back um, I do want to I'd love to stick on this topic real quick because I saw you guys mention SEO sprints on the website, which I thought was really interesting. I was intrigued to learn more about what that means. And the fact that you just called them very productized, I feel like is very attractive because that's hard to do with SEO offerings. Yeah, for sure. I um, learned a lot. So when I rebought back the rights to my agency, Webris, I was already a year and a half or about a year into running the blueprint training. And our offer over there is not a done for you traditional service like you would find at, at most agencies. It's really much more of a, we call it a done with you partnership, right? Um, and in order to do it with you, we provide you a lot of pre-formatted trainings and templates and stuff like that. And what I learned through going through that experience is that there's a lot of people out there that are willing to pay a lot of money to still kind of, or to, to do it themselves, if you will. Um, but also that running a, it's, it's was really like the, the beginnings of what I realized was a productized service, meaning something that 
didn't require me to do custom work every time, didn't require me to have a ton of people, but really, really dialing in the front end offer and then aligning it with the customers on the back end um, and delivering something that's fast, that's seamless, um, and that's quick. And one of the kind of things that we found when we were relaunching our agency, Webris, was just a lot of the, I mean, I've done over probably 5,000 sales calls over the last 10, 12 years in this space. And I've heard a lot of the same objections when you're selling SEO. It takes too long. It's too expensive. Um, just all the above, right? So we wanted to come up with a service that would help us to stand out in what I call a sea of sameness, which is the SEO space, which is everyone selling long-term contracts. Um, you know, everyone's basically pitching something before they actually get in there and do any work. So um, having built a couple of pieces of software on my own and, and, and websites as well, I became familiar with the Sprint model, which is, we didn't make it up by the way, we just kind of repurposed it for the SEO space. Um, and I'm a big proponent that SEO is not what it once was. It's actually it's, it's more work now, but conceptually it's a little bit easier because the algorithm settled. We don't have like the 2012 penguin updates anymore where businesses are wiped off the face of the planet. Google right. learned a lesson from that. So really what it comes down to is understanding the fundamentals. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a football player, I played in college and what football really comes down to is blocking and tackling, right? It's, it's not about the athletic ability. It's really about the team that goes out there and executes the best. Um, and SEO is very much the same. You could know everything about Python and, and algorithms and all this stuff and machine learning. But if you don't have the people in your agency to execute the building blocks, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So what we really wanted to do was kind of create this narrative in the space that it, SEO doesn't have to be that crazy and complex, right? I got a little bit tired of chasing Twitter headlines about all this new <laughs> stuff and machine learning. And I'm like, it doesn't have to be that complicated. It really doesn't. Like it really is just about building a sound website that's fast, that has great content, that's targeting the right keywords, that provides a good user experience, and that you prove to Google that is popular through link building. That's really what it comes down to. So we kind of boiled it down into three different blocks, um, which became our sprint. So sprint number one, we call it our strategy sprint or our roadmap sprint. And essentially what we do there is uh, we built our own technology in-house. We call it a website quality audit, pulls in data from six different APIs, from SEMrush and analytics and all these different things, and basically allows us to look at um, all the websites, data and, and structure and whatnot in a single spreadsheet and report. And then from there, we're able to do a deep technical audit, content audit, competitive audit, a keyword audit, and basically deliver in a final sprint, you know, this is a roadmap for the next 12 months. Um, so we'll do that one sprint. Actually, we'll sell everyone through that sprint. You can't work with us without going through that sprint. We kind of use it as our foot in the door offer as well. Um, and then off the back of that, after you get through the technical side of SEO and, and you kind of clean up the website and it's fast and it's pretty and all that stuff, in my opinion, there's really only two things left, which is content and links, right? So we have a sprint dedicated for content. Um, so within that sprint, we'll do a keyword matrix, we'll do a content calendar, um, and then basically whatever their budget is, we'll then send them content briefs, very, very detailed content briefs at whatever cadence per month that they can handle. So the client is required to have a writer on the other side. We can help provide them with one if they don't, but we don't write any content. It's another huge um, you know, roadblock that we found. So, so the reason why we don't do the writing is similar to the reason why we don't do web design for clients. Um, and it's because it's subjective. And whenever there's room for opinion, um, it just makes for a bad business relationship, right? There's too totally. much worth. Um, they don't want to pay for edits. And it gets to the point where it's no longer worth the investment of the client into that piece of content. And then it can really sour the relationship. So we lose a, quite a bit of deals. I'm not going to lie because we don't write content, but at the same time, we understand who our core customer is. And if you don't have a writer, then you're not going to be like, you're not, you're not in a good position to work with us as an agency anyways. Right. So, um, and we, we also believe that, you know, if, if, if a company is scaling and growing and is serious about growth and they should at least have a writer that they can contact <laughs> and pull off the bench, they don't have to work for them full time, but you should at least have a freelance writer. Um, otherwise it's just going to be way too much work for us. And, it, and we're not a good fit with how we operate, right. We're not a completely done for you agency. That's going to come in and do everything for you we're coming in and solving pieces of the problem. So that's why we work really well with software companies because they kind of adapt to this mindset very well. They're like, we don't need to pay an agency every month to send us a report that we can get from SEMrush. What we mm -hmm. need is somebody to come in and help us do the work. Um, and especially, you know, understanding again, running my own business, I've gotten a lot of insight in terms of what a company should have internally versus what they should outsource. And this is where I think a lot of agencies fail is they don't understand what that relationship is mm -hmm. with the customer that they're trying to target. They're either doing stuff that they have internally or they're not doing stuff that they don't have internally. So it's really right. important that you understand your target customer, what are their deficiencies and how can you come in and, and be a value and that they're going to be willing to pay for, right? So that's our content sprint. Um, we'll deliver very, very detailed content briefs. 
um, we call it like a coloring book, you know, for, for a writer, they literally just have to go in and put words to paper. We even have clients that use AI writers off of those, um, that are able to get the content done. So we'll deliver at whatever cadence that is. We charge, I think $300 per content brief, a minimum of 10. So we'll sprint those out. If they do 10, we'll usually do that over like two months. Um, and then the final sprint is just link sprints. We've got a huge database. We'll do a bunch of outreach, um, you know, to typical SEO type link building. We don't do, we're very clear that we don't do digital PR. We're not going to get you on Forbes. You're not going to get a bunch of clicks from this, but two things that we do guarantee is that you won't get penalized and that your rankings will increase over time. Um, so it's a very SEO focused link building. Um, we're very, very particular about the types of links that we build. And for that, we just charge 350 per link. So just to re recuperate, re I'm sorry to reiterate from the beginning, three sprints, the strategy or roadmap sprint, uh, the content sprint, and then the link sprint. And it's, I mean, we've seen a tripling in our business since implementing this last a little bit over a year ago now. Um, the market wow. has responded really well. Yeah, I mean, it makes it easier for our marketing too. You know, we're, we're very effective advertisers. We're currently plucking leads off of Facebook to cold audiences for less than $100, booked phone call appointments um, for this offer. So it's we've gotten a lot of validation from that. And then just kind of tweaking our sales process a little bit to meet that. Um, we've seen a lot of growth from, from moving to this model. And it's also something that we teach and coach in the blueprint if anyone's interested. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's, there was a lot in there that I liked. Um, I, I really liked, and I feel like this is a nugget for anybody who's um, young in the agency journey. You pointed out two things that content, web design are art, essentially, right? It's subjective. And anything that's subjective is <laughs> a recipe for disaster if you don't have a really, really ironclad process around it. And I feel like um, this is a nice segue into the blueprint, right? So we're going to, I want to talk about, I know we don't have a ton of time, but I want to talk about three areas of the blueprint program that you guys teach. And the first one is positioning. And so I, I loved what I saw um, about how you guys teach positioning. And clearly you have positioned yourselves, right? We don't do this. We do do that. We lose a ton of uh, deals because of this, but we're okay with that. Talk to me about positioning and, and how you help agencies get better at it. Yeah, positioning is something that, you know, I should say, start by saying this too, is that everything that we teach and coach is something that we've done ourselves, right? Um, we started really pushing, it's positioning and we've also made a slash in there for offer design because for whatever reasons, especially SEO agencies, it's just not like, as, like un understanding the mindset of who a traditional SEO professional is, more technical minded, less on the creative side, uh, you know, and that's not mean, meant to be a jab. That's just, that's generalizing and it yeah. just is what it is. Right. So the school of thought learning SEO is very different than the school of thought of learning traditional internet marketing, direct response marketing, et cetera. So what we try to do is kind of marry them both because there's so much value uh, in both of them. Right. I, I would call it like the professional side of SEO, being able to work with clients at a very high level, providing deliverables, documents, organization, communication, but then also direct response marketing, which is to make companies money. Right. Yeah. For whatever reasons in SEO, we get too hung up on keyword rankings and we forget that the goal of what we're supposed to be doing is to make money, you know, and if that makes you uncomfortable, then that's just, you know, it's, it's what it is. So, so <laughs> we, we try and help SEO agencies, especially understand that it's, it's a very much so a competitive market out there with mm -hmm. saturated with anyone with an internet connection in a coffee shop can have an agency, right. And they're just always going to keep undercutting you. So if you don't have a position that's well thought out and it's so much less about you and it's so much more about them as in your target customer, right? So what we really walk people through is we've got a bunch of workbooks and exercises to help you flush out who you should be trying to target, right? Who should you be helping? And really what we break down is it's all about, we, we deconstruct what value means, right? Again, in the SEO space, value means, hey, this is my hourly rate or retainer. This is what my value is. But instead, we're saying the value is what you can provide. What is the business difference that you can make for that company? And that's kind of the, the, the beginning frameworks of, of how we start to build our position. So there's all different types of positioning. There's a lot of a school thought about like niching down, right? Like that's only one element of it though, right? And there's other elements that you can do on top of that. So we teach and coach through all that. And then it culminates in coming up with an offer, right? What is the offer that you're making to the market? And there's actually a really good book that's been floating around and going kind of viral in the direct response marketing space. It's called $100 Million Offers by Alex Hermosi. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend anyone reads it. Super, really good. Um, and that type of thinking applied to the traditional agency space is really powerful because, it, like I said, when you combine these two worlds, this element of professionalism um, and client service with the element of direct marketing and the core concepts that they teach there, which a lot of it is just kind of understanding basic human psychology in a sense. When you combine those two, it's, it's how agencies go from 
two and a half thousand, ten thousand a month to fifty to one hundred thousand quickly. Mm -hmm. Right? It's understanding who you should be targeting and the problems that you should be solving, and then that ties into our second part, which is productization, which means building an offer and a service that specifically only solves the problem of that target customer. That way you can build it into something that you can do scalable and repeatably, just like our sprints. Our sprints, it's crazy. Our margin is over 80% because we are so effective and so fast. We've been able to build custom templates and deliverables and software to yeah. deliver these faster and get people trained up that are less experienced um, because we've got such just ridiculous processes and systems for them to do that. And they're just doing the same thing over and over again, um, which gets better results for the clients. We'd have uh, the, one of the things that we measure is, is like client complaints. And we, we have less than 1% client complaints. And that goes back to what you're saying before too, about how the fact that we're willing to burn customers that we know aren't going to be a good fit because we don't want to deal with the headaches on the back end. It's not worth it. It's not worth it to your employees. It's not worth it to you as a leader. It'll give you an ulcer. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Are constantly complaining. So no. So I want to, I want to pick that apart real quick. So positioning, right. We just sort of illustrated the point, like, and you just nailed it on the head. And I, and I do think positioning is unique to every agency, right? Because every agency has certain strengths and weaknesses and you may able to be able to do things that most agencies would say, we're not going to go there because you have some certain part person or program or SOP or whatever. But I think it's so scary for a young agency to think about turning away business, right? But it takes a few years and a few pummelings to go, that's not worth it. What we just went through is definitely not worth the revenue that we took in from that. Yep. So we're not going to do that anymore. And clearly you've been through it. I've personally been through it. Um, you have to figure out what makes sense and, and what you're going to say no to if you're going to scale. Now, I'd love to talk a little bit more about offer design because I feel like a lot of agencies don't spend time on this. And for us at, our, at the agency that I used to run, we spent a lot of time on this because once we got an offer that resonated, it was like a year we would run it, right? It was like, oh, that free web audit that we came, that, you know, we, we came up with, like you said, use a couple of tools that run a couple of things, bring it into one report. It's a really effective sales tool. It generated it like for like a year, it worked really well. And we just had this beautiful funnel of leads coming in through the same offer. We would run the same playbook, et cetera. And then it fizzled out and it was like, hey, I think it's time to revisit the offer. And then we would come up with a new one and run that one for a while. But it wasn't like, let's go run 20 different things and, you know, figure out which one's working. It was just more like thought out. So I'm curious to hear what you guys teach when it comes to offer creation. Yeah, we've got, so, so first of all, it flows directly off the back. I'll just kind of break down the two workbooks that we have. And we actually use these for clients now as our secondary offer that I said, our growth offer. The offer workbook that we have straight from the blueprint training is I've never gotten such amazing feedback from clients because no agency has ever really sat down with them and taken the time to almost break it down at like a, a fifth grade level, right? And it, it, it's really, really important. And I think a lot of marketers, especially as we grow, we get a little bit of an ego and we're like, we don't need to do that. I know who my customer is. I know what they want, but it's like, you got to go through the process. You, you just have to flush it out, you know, yeah. especially when you're, we're talking about building a team and there's other people, you know, you hire a media buyer, or a copywriter to have this information to go through with them. That's how you get aligned. And that's how I, I think a lot of solopreneurs, they fail because when they have to start building a team, there's there's, it's, they're working in an echo chamber, right? It's all in their head. So essentially we have a positioning workbook, which just flushes out. What are you good at? What do you enjoy doing? Who have you helped before in the past of the hundred clients that you've worked with? Who have you gotten the best results with? Like all that stuff, right? To just kind of flush out the different types of businesses and industries that they might be able to service, right? Mm -hmm. But then the offer is really about kind of customizing your services in a sense, or understanding what you should be offering to those specific people. And it's all about solving problems. So we have a couple of exercises that we go through. Um, some of them are just as simple as start by writing down what their biggest problem is, uh, and then also their dream scenario, right? So I don't know, for example, at the Blueprint Training, it was, uh, uh, we just developed a new offer, it's called Acquisition, because what we found was that so many agencies struggle with acquisition. So it's not really rocket science a lot of times, but how we build that and the pillars that we put into that ultimately define what our service is. And this is where so many agencies go wrong. They're like, I do Facebook ads or I do SEO. And they try and jam that down the throat yeah, yeah. of the customer when, mm -hmm. and even customizing it, which is just a waste of time, as opposed to just having something that's like, no, I have a product for you that's completely done. It's gonna take us less than a week to, to implement. 
first of all, you have the value for that. Like people think that like you got to do a 12 month contract to make a hundred thousand dollars, but I would make the argument that if you can do it in less than a week, I'll double, I'll pay you double that, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> so under like understanding the different kind of levers of, you know, again, kind of like what customers want, what problems you're solving, how you solve it, how fast you solve it, how you deliver it. You have to be, you have to be able to bend and, and kind of be a little bit more malleable with, with what you're doing. And a good example of that, actually one of our customers at the blueprint training, she's a link building expert and she was really struggling to get her link building agency off the ground. And when we went through the positioning and the offer design stuff, what we ended up landing on was just a very basic product where she was, she has a really amazing system and a team of VAs that just crushed Haro links. I don't know if you would help a reporter out really high quality links from an email. Um, so we were able to kind of walk her through this process. And again, sometimes it's, 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 it's just letting go of what, of a little bit of ego in terms of what you, what you think that totally. people want and going just to what they want, you know? So she's crushed. She's doing 50,000 a month now. She was doing like two to 5,000 a month off her links, but now she's got this system where she's just cranking out these. And when you're working with the same type of clients, it just feeds more type of clients around that. Yeah. So getting your offer dialed in. Uh, there's a bunch of different, I actually have a couple of videos on my YouTube channel where I talk about this. Um, I kind of walk through the offer workbook that we have, but a, a lot of it, again, is just kind of breaking down the psychology of what their problem is and how do you get them to where they want to be and understanding where they want to be is key too, right? Because a lot of SEO agencies specifically are like, they want to rank higher. They're, it's like, do they want to rank higher? Do they care about it? <laughs> I don't care about ranking higher. I, I haven't checked my rankings in two years. What I care about is customers, right? That's yeah, what I, that's exactly. ultimately what I want. Um, and even more specific than that, sometimes from an SEO point of view, maybe the company doesn't want more customers. Maybe they just want to build the remarketing list because it's because the CP, the CPMs and CPAs are too expensive on advertising. So if you're able to position yourself and build an offer that's geared towards that through content marketing, that's a different position that helps you stand out from all the other SEO and content marketing agencies out there because you're going in there with a, a specific problem that you're solving and you're helping deliver them to what they ultimately want, right? So these are just small examples about how we can take something that's commoditized, which all marketing, especially SEO is heavily commoditized and putting a spin on it, not by trying to do more, which all agencies do. They're like, well, let me just do this and this and this. It's like, no, 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 no. You don't have to do more. You actually should be doing less, right? Yeah. And you, you just need to refocus the problem that you're solving because I, me now too, as a, as a company who hires vendors all the time, I don't want some crazy ass, like, proposal to come in and like read the, like I just want I, I just I, I want you to do what I'm hiring you to do right and I want you to solve one thing problems. that I need you to do that's it and, and I'm willing to pay you a premium to do so right so a lot of agencies just get stuck in and it's not to, it's to no fault of their own because nobody teaches this nobody's telling they're not even teaching some business classes you know this is like mm -hmm. kind of new age internet stuff that we're able to take a step back and again look at human psychology at scale and how people react to different things and offers and that should be taken into account when you're when you're designing your service in your agency. All right. I, I mean, I know that we're running out of time, so I want to make sure we get to this last point because I think it's a great one. So in preparing for the episode, one of the things that we were talking about going over is the fact that most agencies don't market themselves very well, which is kind of funny when you think about it. But I guarantee you, if you polled 100 agencies, 80 of them would say we can do way better at marketing ourselves. It's the, you know, the, the cobbler's children have no shoes. It's the whole thing. So how do you help agencies actually get off their butt and start marketing themselves as much as they're, you know, putting into their clients? By, by dissecting the core problem, which is it's time, right? It's, it's everyone, they, and, and this is actually, I run, one of our best performing ad hooks ever is, hey, marketing agency, why do you suck at marketing yourself? It, it, it crushes it. it, it the click-through rate is amazing. Oh, as everyone is, <laughs> it, it's, it's, a, it's like a running joke in the industry, you know? Um, and it's it's not like, um, again, a, an offer and positioning mistake for us would be like, oh, because you don't know how to. It's like, no, I know how to. I just don't have the time, right? So that goes back to diagnosing what the, what the real problem is, which is a time thing. So what we teach is organization. That's, that's really what we teach. We teach you how to fit marketing into your schedule. And then of course, we'll give you swipe files and templates and, you know, all sorts of different things. And, and I think even more importantly too, we actually had a call this morning about it was, was really working with our sales team to understand and listen to the different stages of where that person is at and making product recommendations based on that. So a good example is for the acquisition program, we have kind of three different products within that. We have one for like, um, sale, like outreach, which is like account-based marketing. We have one for content marketing and one for pay traffic. We're really heavily listening to kind of where they are, the resources that they are, and then we're kind of driving them down that path. 
But ultimately, especially on the content marketing side of things, which is more of like the traditional type of marketing, it's a little bit less acquisition focus and a little bit more brand and kind of just traditional marketing focus and all that whatnot. It's about time. Like we're not, there's, there's only like, if you, if you are, if you own an, an agency and you have clients, then you know enough about marketing, right? Um, and, the thing about, and the thing about marketing too, is people want to overcomplicate it. It's really not that complicated. Just put out stuff that people want and get it in front of them. That's really it. But finding the time and the resources to do it is really hard. So the, really the first core thing that we work with people on is dissecting their schedule. Like I want you to, for the first week of this program, I want you to write down everything that you do during the workday, right? I don't care how obscene it is. You don't have to share it with us. It's really more of an exploration exercise for you to understand that you're wasting time at points in your day that you could be building your business. So if we can get an extra hour a day from people, then we've, we've already won, you know, and this also goes back to the conversation I was kind of alluding to about value, right? This is how we position and sell things more when we're having these sales conversations with people. It's about getting people a feeling that feeling of having an extra hour a day. How much would you be willing to pay for that? You know, even if I'm just giving you a, a freaking piece of paper and telling you to write stuff down, it doesn't matter. Right. It, it, another mistake that agencies and, and businesses make is they, assume the value on the behalf of the prospect without actually, you, you know what I'm saying? Like they'll just like, Oh, they don't, they're not going to pay for that. It's like, you don't know that. And, and until you go through that process and again, connect with people and, and, and have these conversations, which is why we've also moved all our businesses to a straight sales model. Like we don't have any sort of payment information, any sort of pricing information, because we want to talk to people um, and we want to give them a certain type of feeling and we want to bring them into our ecosystem the right way with the right mindset and the right mentality. Um, and again, it's another thing that we've done that's skyrocketed our sales because, you know, we're, we're ultimately building relationships with people and, and as opposed to just, you know, trying to increase our margins, which obviously there's nothing wrong with that either, but, um, and it's also allowed us to sell or to raise our prices tenfold <laughs> over the last two years, um, because of that, because we're able to have the conversations, dissect value and walk them through, just like I said, the problem that they're having and where they want to be. We want to give them, we want to show them of where they are. We want to make them feel whatever they're feeling about where they are. And we want to try and help them feel mentally feel where they will be if we were to take that load off their plate. And it's the best sales tactic there is. Um, That's fascinating. I mean, I talked to a lot of folks who sort of echo that sentiment. And I think it's interesting because clearly, you know, as agencies get more experienced and clearly with you guys, you've productized a lot of your offerings. So they're really buttoned up and streamlined, which lends itself to being able to put pricing on a site. We have this really dialed up package and that's the price of it. But it was fascinating when you said, no, we did away with that because we want sales guy to talk to every single person we close, which is really interesting because like you said, it gives you time to ask questions, connect with them, unearth, uh, you know, a common theme of speaking with um, successful folks like yourself is unearth things that are unexpected, but easy wins. You talk to someone and they're like, you know what kills me? This. And you're just like, what? That's so, like, we could fix that so easily. And it will go so far with that one specific client. He'll be willing to pay for you know, he's not going to go anywhere. We just need to make sure that we fix that one stupid little thing that drives him nuts. Um, and I think that happens a lot more than people think. If you actually sit down and be like, what's well, outside of your ranking, what drives you nuts about your, your day to day? You know what I mean? hundred percent, hundred percent. And, and we all, again, we make a lot of assumptions as marketers and one of them, the, if we build a super long landing page, which I see all the time that people are actually going to read the whole thing. And they don't. <laughs> so when you yeah. put the pricing on it, what happens is they don't get all the information. They're making their own assumptions about the value. They're coming to their own conclusions about how much you're charging. And they're coming to their own conclusion about whether or not they want to buy that without you being able there to guide them. Right. So right. what I, what I simplify for, for clients a lot of the time is that I, I mostly instead, we mainly work with B2B clients. We have a few e-commerce clients, but I, I really specialize in, in helping companies really generate leads and, and valuable conversations. And what I try and get them to understand is that marketing is just about giving people a feeling. It's about getting them to have a feeling that is going to drive them to take action, to want to have a conversation and to want to show up to the conversation and to want to talk to you. And then you can cover so much more in a 15 minute conversation than a landing page or, or video marketing all or advertising because people just don't pay attention. It's also why we're moving all of our, the entire blueprint training platform to live training as opposed to video training and um, mm -hmm. what we have. It's, it's, it's more of a burden for us, but we don't care because ultimately we grow based on if our customers grow. So we're willing to put in that time and energy because we know if we get them to show up, you know, one of my biggest pet peeves is when people 
you know, they, they send us an email about like, oh, you know, like I didn't, I didn't get the results I'm expecting. And I go into their account and I see they haven't watched any videos. I'm like, well, what do you expect? They're like, I'm busy. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> you know, I, 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 there's nothing I can do for you, you know? But again, if I, if I sit you down and I talk to you and have a conversation with you, and it's just the time and age that we live in where people are just distracted and there's a million things going on. So I get it. So we're moving to that model because again, we truly believe that um, in the age of technology and automation, that if we can connect with people at a human basis, they're not just going to pay us, but they're going to be a customer for life, you know? Um, and that's really how we're growing too, is not just on the front end offer that we're making, but, you know, we've been in business for three years now. We've been selling people products and offers nonstop, and it's, it's great to help them actually grow their business and, and, and see that happen. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on that. I'm all about automation and stuff, but, um, nothing beats, <laughs> nothing beats a good salesperson. Honestly. Well, plus it gives you the opportunity to really set the expectation correctly. And I feel like that's such a big part of it. Right. And, having your salespeople really understand what the expectations are. <laughs> I can recall months of pain because the sales team was saying things that the operations team were not prepared to fulfill. And it was like this total misalignment. But when you fix that, then everything really seems to fall right into place. And so if you're, if you're forcing everybody you work with to go through a conversation, at least, <laughs> then it gives you that opportunity to really set expectations and, filter out like you said say no to the people that it's like sometimes you talk to people and you're just like that's not reality like sorry like we can't make that happen but neither can anybody else you're going to talk to and if you can't come to terms with that then you know we're not going to be a good fit for you 100 percent, definitely so ryan um the blueprint well first of all webris i think is just an amazing example to go check out especially if you're young young in your agency journey i think the website's fantastic it's really not only is it visually beautiful but i think the structure of it is spot on so kudos to you guys i, I think you should check it out it's webris.org w-e-b-r-i-s.org um, but what's the blueprint training url where people can go check that out mm -hmm. it's the blueprint dot training I didn't even know dot training was a TLD. News to me. There we go. My developer found it. <laughs> <laughs> the blueprint dot training. Awesome. Um, do you guys have like free downloadables or anything that they can yeah, check we've out? Yeah, we've got a ton of stuff up there. If you just go to framework, we've got our BT3 framework where it walks you through the positioning, uh, the pro pro uh, positioning, productization, and then marketing. That's kind of like our three pillars there that I truly, I mean, any business really, but especially agencies, if you can nail those three things, then you're not only going to make more money, but you're going to enjoy running the business a lot more because I think with agencies, especially every day feels like it's drinking from a fire hose and it's, it's no way to live your life. It's really not. And there's this like common, I used to work in big agency stuff too. After I left consulting, I did a little bit of a stint as a contractor at Sapient Nitro and Digitas. And like the culture there is just like, yeah, we work till 11 PM every day. And I'm like, that's not cool. <laughs> like, yeah. you're okay with that? Like, that's not okay. Like, you know what I mean? And it's, it's not okay. Um, especially now where we spend so much time in front of our screens. Like, I, I mean, it, it's, it's really, it helped me open the eyes to, to the type of agency I want to run, which is fully remote, which is take off as much time as you want, you know, just make sure that you stay in communication and contact, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And it, it, yeah, I mean, if, if you feel like that, honestly, then then you need to have a conversation with us because if you feel like every day is a, is, is a fire sale and you're drinking from a fire hose and you're just hurting cats and there's never enough hours in the day, it does not have to be like that. It really does not. I don't care what everyone says. Um, I take, love that because I feel like a lot of folks listen to this, what we've been talking about, say, that sounds great. Like, I'd love to say no to clients and then, but still have enough business to keep the doors open and things like that. Like a lot of, I feel like a lot of people hear that and think it's a fantasy. I would agree. That's why you need to talk to us because it's not. <laughs> I mean, I mean it's, it's really not. And it's really not that complicated, too. It really does. Like if you if you were to ask me one thing, it's just being more organized. You know, like so many of the people that have that suffer from that, that are like, I can't like I'm working nonstop. My wife wants to kill me. I'm like, mm -hmm. show me your project management system. And they're like, well, I can't show you my notepad. I'm like, then this is <laughs> Like, it, let's start, let's just start here, <laughs> you know, like, like have a plan and set dates and follow them and then bring people in. That's the other thing too. I, another big thing that I push on agencies is that, um, you know, I've started other companies, software company, right. And I had to put a 50 grand ahead of time. Right. And that was the investment with agencies. We make our money up front. And then all of a sudden you're making 20 grand a month and you're living good. You're taking eight grand a month and you're making a hundred grand a year and everything's good. And then you're like, you're feeling 
like you're overwhelmed and it's because you refuse to hire people. It's because it's really hard. And I, I empathize. It's really hard to take money out of your pocket to pay someone, but that's the investment. That's the trade-off with the agency business. It's going to be easier starting up because your first clients are all profit, you know, that's it. And, and life yeah. is good, but then it gets really hard because whether you know it or not, this business is not about you. It's about the people that you bring into your agency. So you got to invest in people and you got to invest your time and energy into those people into making sure that they're as happy as possible. Because once you get good people, if they leave, it's, it's not a fun business to run. So um, it just, well, the just, other part I would love to interject because I, I, I meant to say this earlier, but I didn't want to interrupt you. I feel like when you do um, really streamline your offering, you you grow your passion because you spend the your agency itself spends the time doing the thing that you guys love that you're good at and not the thing that drives you nuts or the services that you know you're losing money on or that you know are just you can't get your head around it you can't make it work if you can get rid of that i feel like the passion comes through and i've always felt that about your videos you're clearly super passionate about what you guys are doing and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like cutting fat is a big part of having room for passion or. I think, I think that's a really good point. I do love what I do. Um, and I'm glad that comes across because um, I really do enjoy it. I mean, building businesses and helping people build businesses and, and, and especially now working through the blueprint where it's not just about making money. It's about so much else it's about having that personal freedom. It's about being able to have, live an enjoyable life and spend time with their family and, and still make a good income um, in an increasingly crazy worlds. Um, but if you don't have the time to even enjoy it because you're just working nonstop and it's tough too with clients because you're not working, you're, you're, you're basically working a job when you're working for a client, you're, you're working for them, you're working for their business. So if you're not able to clear your plate and take a step back and work on the business and not, it's super cliche, but it's hundred percent true. You're going to hate it. It's just not fun. And that's not just agencies. That's any business. Like if you're running a coffee shop and you have to serve coffee the whole time, like it sucks. Um, and it's really hard and it's really hard to smell the roses sometimes when you're that far in. But again, there's, it doesn't have to be like that. And it's not something that you should accept. It, it is the norm for most part, but it doesn't have to be like that. Um, so again, we have plenty for, I don't know, only sell you, but I, we have plenty for your source. I'm sure you guys do too. Um, and you know, we can help. <laughs> nice. All right, guys. Well, um, you can check that out at the blueprint.training. Ryan, thanks again so much for coming on to chat with us. Thanks for having me, Chase. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one.